Where you're gonna make the best money in trucking is in the LTL industry and fuel industry. ABF, right? Old Dominion, Saya, Estes. Now, if I had a choice as far as non-union goes, where would I go as far as LTL? Um, I don't think I'd go to another LTL company. I think I'd go and haul fuel. If I can't get in with ABF or UPS, me personally, just my opinion, if you notice, I always say, based on my knowledge and experience. I only have three years of experience in trucking. And through all the other drivers I've spoken to with years of experience, retirement even, they'll say the same thing, you know, I wish I'd gone with the union carrier. You're still gonna make money, okay? The only difference, union and non-union, is how union, you know, we get a pension, we get free healthcare. Non-union, often you get paid more but in the back end, you better be smart with your investments, especially 401k. You do know that 401k was not created to be a retirement plan. That's not what it was meant for. It was meant to get people into stocks. That's what it was meant for. And just my opinion, I wouldn't go anywhere else, man. If, if I had to go somewhere else, right, I would go and haul fuel. Where would I haul fuel? Do your homework. I don't want to refer you anywhere that that I don't have experience with, but instead of ABF, I was gonna go to KAG. That's where I was gonna go. I know a guy that made a lot of money working for Cox. So those are the only two names that I'm gonna throw out there, okay? And that's just based on talking to people. That's not having actual experience with the company. So I gotta be honest and tell you that. Now, with that said, what moves should you make personally for yourself? If you're going to go city driver at ABF, expect to just kind of, you know, honestly, you're going to be making it, right? You want to stack money? Lion Hall's where it's at, okay, with ABF. Uh, you want to stack money? UPS. Anything you do with UPS, you're going to make a lot of money. And then the plus, ABF and UPS, the pension, the free health care, this, that, and the other. Okay, if you do not want to uh, be operating a lift gate, okay, if you don't, I have plenty of content. Upper right-hand corner of your screen, check this video out on a lift gate operation. And this is how, this is things going, you know, pretty smoothly. The thing is, guys, you know, you're pallet jacking and lift gating. And when you're carting the stuff back and forth, in and out of the trailer, you know, pieces break of the pallet and it can make it difficult to maneuver around in the trailer. You gotta make sure it's well swept. So if you break pieces, you can end up getting stuck. And man, let me tell you, sometimes the freight is very heavy, but you're gonna have a better time in LTL than you would in the food service. The food service, you'll make money though. You'll be able to stack money. Places like Cisco, US Foods, you know, places like that. Dude, yeah, you're gonna make money in their union. So. That's why I recommend those ones. But that, that's the thing, you're gonna make money. You got the pension, you got the free healthcare. Teamsters, baby, right? I don't know too much about being an owner operator. I almost took that leap. I almost bought a 1994 Mack truck while I was in Ohio. I was over the road with Mountain Truck Lines and I was about this close. It had 980,000 miles on it. <clears throat> and the dude wanted to sell it to me for 12 grand. I said, uh -uh. you know, I'll take it for eight. He didn't, he didn't drop the price any lower than that. He, he stayed consistent with 12. I thought, ah, it's too much, man, and too much of a risk. And now, with all this happening with the fuel, you know, I'm glad I didn't buy it. I am very glad I didn't buy it. I wouldn't want to be dealing with that right now. Owner operatorship wasn't for me. You know, either way, I was going to have to work a lot of hours. I've spoken with a lot of owner operators, and they said that all the hours that they're working, that it just ain't worth it. So that was kind of my answer right there, you know. But, you know, at least these guys were able to buy houses for themselves, you know, back when the fuel wasn't way up in the sky. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a really bad time for owner ops right now. So my heart does go out to you guys, but it's not too late to make the jump and uh, go company. I mean, especially if you guys jump out of there and go and haul some fuel for a company. I mean, you'll make some damn good money and you'll be home every day. You know, the hours are still long. It's not like you aren't used to long hours already, right? Um, but with that said, you, you 
it anywhere in trucking you can't really power down until you have what you want right you got the house you got a nice car or a decent car basically you've been able to acquire the things that you want right property it's one of the most important things uh one of the most one of the best investments that you can make vehicles terrible investments terrible um, but as long as you can afford them you know it's okay it's just an expense that has to be made it is what it is so with that said you guys take what i said for what it's worth some of you will agree some of you won't that's fine that's uh that's how i view it i just know based on what i've seen based on my knowledge and experience you know is what i communicate to you guys and for the most part you look in the comment sections and uh you don't really see too much opposition to my opinions. Mr. By the Mile, you're home for discussions based on my knowledge and experience in trucking, the Red Cone Survival. Take care and stay safe. All of you truck drivers out there, new and veteran, and all you Teamsters, man. See you on the road.